So a little bit about myself. I own a fitness center for the past 13 years. Recently closed it in November. But besides that, I have a company called Fusion Promotions. We do our promotions. And then our newest venture is Fusion Racing, which is our race company. A little bit about our community. We started an organization called the Friends of New Art Canine Fund, which um, purchases police dogs for our local police department. We have Fusion Inclusion, which is our adaptive racing chairs. We build an adaptive playground in our community, and we're recently launching our own foundation. And just some awards that we've won over the years. But the most impressive is Fusion has raised and donated over $2 million in the past 13 years to our local community. Right. Pretty impressive when you think we're a team of about three or four people. So I've been in the industry for almost 20 years. I was a personal trainer, that's how I got started. Part of our business model over the years of Fusion Fitness was to help people and give back to our community. In 2006, I created a race called the Main Street Mile, and we did that to raise money for the North Police Canine Fund. Over the years, I worked with local race directors, and I was never satisfied with the service that we got. We became experts in raising money, and our organizations continued to grow. More and more people started to reach out to us and ask us to help them. Light bulb went off and go, I can actually make a business out of this, probably. So in 2015, we created, we, uh, created Fusion Racing, we managed and owned about 10 events. At the end of 2018, after 13 years, I decided to close my fitness center and focus solely on racing. And this year, we'll manage and put on close to 100 events. But this is the race that started it all for me. It was the Main Street Mile. If anybody's familiar with Newark, Delaware, University of Delaware, it's a one mile straight shot, businesses down on both sides, restaurant bars. So we shut down the town and we have a one mile race from the start to the finish line. Finish line ends at a bar, we do Bloody Mary bars, beer tents, we do a canine demonstration. It draws about a thousand people. Really cool event. But with that event, we've raised over $200,000 in 13 years. We've bought police dogs, equipment, we've put out cars for them. And of course, a shout out to the team who's in the front row over here. Um, this was recently, in 2019, I was awarded the Small Business Council of America Humanitarian of the Award. Humanitarian of the Year Award in DC. So that was us in DC getting an award. But what I say is, I received the award, but it was really the community who, who allowed me to receive that award. But today we're going to talk about raving fans. Does anybody know what raving fans are? Exactly. So, Ken Blanchard coined the term raving fans to describe a customer who is so overwhelmed and floored by the customer service they receive that they can't stop telling anybody about it. Is anybody in this room raving fans of a company? What company? DRBO. Okay. Patagonia. Why? Patagonia? Yeah. Uh, everything they stand for, every time I interact with them, call them, email them, the customer service looks great. Everything about money interaction is So people, companies like Disney, companies like Starbucks, Disney's the happiest place on earth. Starbucks, they write your name on it, they call your name out. Amazon, you, one click, next day delivery, raising fans of that, and Zappos. Just a few big corporate companies that people are normally raising fans of. Blaze uh, Z, you know, Patagonia, you're a raving fan. They're not paying you to do it, but you're still telling people when you're shopping and you're probably, you know, you buy something, you put it on your social media and you tag it, right? So what we had to figure out is we were new to the industry in Delaware. We're, you know, with other race time companies in Delaware, we're new to the town. We have to get our name out there. And how are we going to do that? We did it by figuring out how to create raving fans. And the way we were going to do this is we were going to establish a brand that people wanted to be a part of. We are going to provide top-notch customer service. We're going to make all runners feel important. Inclusion is a huge word for us. And create a community of runners who want to be part of something bigger. So when you establish a brand, you want to have a cool logo, you want to have a cool name, you want people to talk about it on social media, and you want the community to get involved. So when you're looking at creating, whether it's your business or a race, it doesn't need to be Nick's 5 um, You know, the Main Street Mile, we put on races, you know, tacos and margaritas, orange crush team races. You want something that people are like, that's really cool, I want to put that on a shirt, I want to walk around with it. I want to tell other people about it. Top-notch customer service. We want to understand the clients and runners' needs. Attention to detail, 
be responsive, especially social media and email, get back to people, and own responsibility. It's really easy to pass blame in this industry. Somebody else did it. My client didn't get the volunteers. They forgot the water. But at the end of the day, if you're a race director or you're the timer, it does fall back on you. You are associated with that. Um, so always take responsibility, always double check on your clients. Inclusion, all abilities, all speeds. So with us, really big about inclusion, we have our adaptive racing chairs there. This is Andrew, he rides a bike sometimes, but he was walking in the mainstream mile this year. But whether it's a five minute mile or a 20 minute mile, you wanna make sure everybody feels appreciated and important at your race. And then we create a community, and we do that through the charities we work with, we do that by fundraising for them, and we do that by volunteering. You know, here's one of our running club members handing out water at our touchdown race. So in the racing business, how can you quickly create raving fans? And we did this by accident, so we created a running club. Um, and we utilized the running club to create our raving fans and to grow our races in the beginning. Does anybody utilize the running club app, uh, feature they have in one sign up? Yeah, I kind of stumbled upon it one night and said, what is this? Very powerful, a lot of cool features with it, but not a lot of people necessarily use it. Um, a couple different ways you can create a free club, but with us, we do a paid membership. So we started our club in 2016. We have over 300 plus active members in the running club, and it is a paid membership. The reason we did a paid membership is because we wanted people to actually utilize it um, and feel like they were getting something out of it. Because a lot of times when you get something for free, you're actually not going to utilize it at all. So we charge $39 to be a part of this club for a 12 month. But what they get out of it is they get discounts on local races, they get access to our private Facebook page, uh, discounts at local businesses, we do a weekly group run, uh, we give them a shirt, and it gives them a sense of community. So the way we do discounts at local races, which is really cool with that feature, is you can go into the race, type in club in that search box, and you can say, Fusion Running Club, hit a, hit a button, I'm going to give them 10% off. It's not a coupon code at that point. So it's automatically tied to their email, so when they go check out at the race, it automatically gives them the discount. Uh, pretty powerful because they don't have to think about it, they don't have to worry about a coupon code, and it's not something they can share with a bunch of people where I know other races get, you know, they don't want to give too much of a discount. But with this, it's not something that they can share. Access to our private Facebook page, this is great because the community gets on there, they talk to each other, they post about their runs, they do meetup stuff on here, they ask advice on shoes. So this is a very powerful tool for us to continue to grow it. We work with local businesses that are corporate sponsors of ours to get them discounts, new balance, cleaning company, roofing, balding. They have weekly group runs. Weekly group runs are run solely by the running club. We have ambassadors, they go out, they put it on, people meet up. We basically, we set the time for them, we set the location for them, and they go do it themselves. So it's not something we even have to manage. We give them a shirt. Shirt's very powerful when you do this, you know. He finished a run, he posted it on Facebook. You know, Mike's drinking a beer from one of our sponsors, he's wearing the shirt. They're taking selfies on vacation, he's on a cruise. So giving that is just helping our brand by giving them a shirt when they do the future running club sign up. And it gives them a sense of community. Um, you know, they did a, the park that we normally run at, they did a cleanup. Um, you know, they're all working together doing volunteers, Shaggy's out on the course. But we've logged over 500 volunteer hours already this year. And we're only a little bit halfway through the year. If you think about that, when you're putting on your races, one of the hardest things probably is finding volunteers. It's a struggle at the last minute, course marks with water stops. Because of the running club, I have active 300 people that I can go and just email directly and say, we need volunteers this day. And normally they'll, they'll do it. We don't have to give them anything. We don't give them free entries. It's just they want to be part of the community. So it's very powerful when it comes to volunteers. So how does a running club help create great fans? They promote the brand for us at this point. They wear their shirts, they wear our shirts, it has our logo on it, they're in the community, they're wearing it to races, they're wearing it to Home Depot, they're wearing it to the grocery store. People are recognizing that brand. They engage and they post for us on social media. You know, they're posting their runs, they're posting pictures of them on vacation with the shirts. 
Um, they're posting pictures of our after parties. So they're doing a lot of the work for us on social media. And they are constantly recruiting new members for us. We don't pay ads to get new running club members. If somebody goes out, they're with a friend, and they say, you need to join this club because it's really cool. So they actually go out and they sell for us. They help us provide top-notch customer service. What we found is the running club is they continue to show up every weekend, race after race. So what it does for the registration team and the check-in team, they know their names. There's people that continually show up to our events, whether it's a race we own or a race we manage. But it helps with our customer service because we learn our clients at that point. They're repeat customers. We're not seeing new faces every single weekend. We're seeing the same faces over and over, and we build those relationships. They provide us feedback. Uh, you know, they're proud of fusion racing and what we do in running clubs. So they tell us if something's not right. They tell us if something's bad and, you know, they heard a bad review about us. Literally, somebody posted something the other day, and they were asking how much fusion racing makes on a race. My running club jumped in, and it wasn't, I wasn't proud of it, but they attacked that person saying, you know, it's none of your business what they make. They put on a good show. So they will be your eyes and ears, and they will support you guys. Um, you know, if there's a race coming up and they hear somebody wants to put on a 5K, they give us the lead. But the club is truly about every runner. We have five minute milers, we have 20 minute walkers, we have inclusion race chairs, and we have adaptive bikes in our, in our, um, in our running club and at our races. And it does create a sense of community because they help pick us, they help pick the charities. Uh, a lot of the races we own, we own about 20 races. We go in and we ask what charities need help. Is there a local charity in the community that needs help? They let us know. We pick them. We raise money for them. Uh, they raise money together, so they become a part of it because they don't know it's a charity that they wanted to help out, so they'll go out and help recruit for it also. Um, and they give back, volunteering, cleaning up parks. So how has Fusion Running Club helped Fusion Racing as a company? Well, because we have 300 people that we can actively go out every time we have a race, we always have an increase in race participants. We know that by emailing them, letting them know that there's a race coming up, we can almost guarantee our clients that we're going to have a certain amount of number of participants show up. That's big when you're working with a small local church who, you know, last year they might have only got 50 people. And now we can guarantee them, we're going to have 200 people for you because of the way we promote our running club and the other means of promotion. Uh, they create more awareness for us on social media because they're going out, they're posting pictures, they're hashtagging, they're tagging us. They're walking billboards for us. They're wearing the shirt with the logo on it. Um, we're establishing a, da a database of volunteers. <laughs> and it allows us to sell bigger sponsorships. Uh, you know, if you're selling sponsorships to anybody, you know that they want to know how many people are showing up at your race. If we can guarantee them that X amount of people are showing up, and then we have an active community who's following them, and they believe in what we do, and if we're willing to promote, you know, Bolden Brothers for your heater, when your heater breaks, you're probably going to go to Bolden Brothers because you know it's associated with Fusion. So it allows us to sell bigger sponsorships. So, just a final thought with this. Just having satisfied customers isn't good enough anymore. If you want a booming business, you have to create raving fans. You know, so one of the biggest things that we learn with the running community is it's a very close knit group. Everybody knows each other, but it, for a lot of people, they're meeting for the first time when they're at a races or they're at the running clubs. And we can say a lot of the people in the running clubs have made really good friends now, so they volunteer together, they show up for the races together. Some of them are going on vacation together. So we're building that sense of community. And what that does it makes them come to our race instead of the other local 5K that we have. Um, you know, they're posting it on social media for us to try to get their friends and family because they want them to have a good time and show up at the bar afterwards and have a beer with them. So the running club has been a great way for us to create raving fans and a great way, a way for us to increase our business over the past couple of years. Um, so with that, I'll take any questions. Yeah. How did you get away from, you set up the running club, how did you get away from managing it? You partnered with a running store? No. So we set it up, we sell it. We don't, we don't manage our weekly runs. We basically have ambassadors in the running club. Okay. But we set the time for the week, weekly runs, we set the time and the place. So on Thursday at 6.30 at this part, that's where everybody meets. It doesn't change. 
So you personally aren't going out, but you've got identified someone in your group that is that ambassador. Well, we know that they're all going to show up. And we know certain people will show up. Right. But like me and the team, we don't have to go out and manage that group. Not. They take a picture, they post it on social media afterwards, we know who's there, we tag everybody. But we don't have to go out and manage it. So we don't have to pay anybody to be there. Um, but, and what they do is they bring friends in the group on too. Sure. And then they start talking about the club and they try to get people to sign up for the club too. But they're all on tape. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Membership fee is annual or one time? It is annual. So $39 a year. Um, a couple times a year, like we'll do a buy one, get one, but the person has to be a new member. So like you buy it, you do it, you can give one to a friend. Um, with run sign up, it doesn't have to be a year. You can do one month, three months, I believe, whatever you want to do. Um, so sometimes we'll give away like a three month membership for free because we know after that three months, they're probably going to sign back up. We want them used to getting the discounts at our races. Um, and then after three months, our conversion rate is pretty high to get people to sign back up. How many years have you had the club? Since 2016, we started. Okay. So did they get another shirt? Or... Yep, we give them another shirt. Okay. And normally after a year, that shirt's worn out, they need another shirt. Yeah. <laughs> another? No, Okay. <laughs> well, that's okay, but I'm asking another question because I have a friend that has a running club I'm in Tampa, okay. and she had been on Run Sign Up, and she's going to another platform. She said because Run Sign Up won't do an annual, um, like they don't send out reminders, and I've never known that they, they have do. a club feature on it. They do. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, when you're about to expire, it sends you a message saying it's time to review. So membership. it does do that. It does. Okay. Yep. She got wrong information. Yeah. Thank you. Um,
push content out of them, and then they they get two free race entries per year, and they can earn additional ones. Like the number of referrals they get determines they get swag or cash back or more free race entries. Yeah, and we see a lot of. I mean, there's some people who get zero, and there's one gal who's got this like 500 registrations. Yeah, over the course of a year. And then, so is it a yearly thing? So our masters will change every year. We don't want the same ambassador. Yeah, we kind of reevaluate them every year. And the ones that are getting zeros, like we kind of yeah, like, got your, yeah, but the yeah. ones that are doing a good job, and you know, yeah, we're keeping her. Can you give me that person's email? <laughs> right, we, we all want that person. <laughs> yes. How do you handle uh, liability for programs if you're not there? They're on their own. I mean, it's no different than me and Mike going for a run today. I mean, it's we have we have insurance. I have so much insurance; it's not even funny. But it, you know, at the end of the day, it's I didn't tell them to go there and run. They decided to meet up as a group and just run together. But then you're organizing it because you're telling them where to run. We're saying that there's going to be a group of people there. We didn't tell them to go run there. So can you can you on their member on the membership site when they sign up as a member? There's can you a, not there's include a liability waiver? Yeah. 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 Just like you would at a race. Got it. Yeah. I mean, but our insurance would cover if something happened on that. Our insurance would cover it. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you didn't they didn't sign up for it. You didn't make it mandatory for them to be there. Um, you're just kind of, you know, it's like put them on a happy hour. And you say you're where I'm going to be. Right, and you didn't make that person drink or show up in the bar. That you, that's just where you were. Right. So um, it's not something I would be too concerned about. But I would just check with whoever your insurance provider is if you're going to know to see if you're covered for it or not. Uh, we have people who naturally just become faster and they're great. Right. But do you? Certain things throughout the year to yeah. maintain that investor. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen a lot of different ones just from different people that I work with. Uh, we don't. Uh, we only use three ambassadors, and really, we were just doing it to make sure you know somebody on that we could find out who knows. Um, but I've seen it where contracts do come in handy because if somebody's not holding their end of the bargain and you're giving them something in return, you're able to break that contract with them. Um, but with us, it's a year. You know, at the end of the year, we'll, we'll bring in new ambassadors. Uh, but depending how much you're giving to somebody, especially if it's you know a lot of swag or you're spending a lot of money, I would have a contract with them to make sure they're holding up their end of the bargain. Uh, but with us, you know, we're giving away for these entries, so you know, we just they want to do it. Yeah. Have you, have you ever run into any kind of, for lack of a better way to put it, competition or pushback from other area running clubs that were in existence when you started the one associated with your business? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, like I said, we're the new kid on the block. So we came in and, you know, everybody knows about us in our area now. Um, we're probably one of the biggest running clubs in the area now, too, with over 300 people. Other running clubs didn't like that. Um, but at, at the end of the day, competition just makes you better. So I, I don't really worry about it. We were timing some races for other local running clubs. You know, they didn't renew our contracts with them. Um, just as, as we grew, but I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, you know, just focus on what you do and make the best you can and not worry about your competition. I started a company recently, like a year and a half ago, just, just to add on, and I think my community hadn't seen a new running store, race, anything in ages running the club. And, oh man, it's just like stepping on toes no matter what I do, and then I was reminded that, like, if like you're not upsetting people, then you're probably not doing it. You're not doing right. You've got to make waves. <laughs> yeah, you have to. Um, you know, at the end of the day, if people aren't talking about you, you're not doing something right. I mean, it's really just you want to create the best product that you have, uh, whether it's your own race or, or one that you're timing for somebody else. That's how you get the great fans. That's how you get repeat business over and over again. Whether you have a 100 person race, 5K, or you have a 5,000 person race, it's got to be the same feel. Um, you know, we do a lot of custom bids with their name on it. It might be a 100 person race for a 5K, but how excited is that person who's got their name on their bid for a local 5K? Then they're hanging it on their wall and they're taking a picture of it. 
we're just constantly rebranding ourselves. You have to make your event, no matter how big it is, um, be special for that person. And like I said, whether they're a five minute miler, a 20 minute miler, it, it's gotta feel good for both of them. You can't have it one sided. And the people who are spending money with you are your 12 to 15 minute milers. They are the ones who are coming out and bringing three friends with them. So when we market, I don't market after they the athletes. They're gonna find your race, they're gonna show up, they're gonna win your prize money. The one I'm marketing to is that 12 to 15 minute miler it is their first 5K. That's who I want in this club too, because they're the one posting on social media for me. They're tagging everything, they're telling their friends, and they're bringing three friends to the next race. Yeah. That kind of leads me to my question because uh, my run group is, it, it was, I'm in this group because I started a beginner's 5K program. And so it's a 12 week program. Not $39 for a whole year. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to like wrap my mind around, um, you know, now if you're not there, now today is like a day where we would normally train. I'm there. Like I'm there all the time. So um, I, I gave them the schedule today and they're going to do it on their own. That, that doesn't happen too often, you know? But I guess one of my questions is like, um, you know, you charge the $39 for a whole year. Um, can a person that's using this at a run club as a training program, it's 12 weeks, maybe it's $150 for 12 weeks, uh, can you use run sign up to set that run group up too, just like vary the prices, or what do you do? See, what you're doing is something a little bit different. Like you're doing like personal training and coaching, right? What I'm utilizing the running club platform is, is to get them to sign up for races. That's why it's only $39 a year because I'm leveraging that to get them to sign up for our races. Yeah, so, I mean, you're kind of doing, I don't know if Runsign would be the right platform to sell that on. Um, you know, but the reason it's $39 is because all these people are doing probably 20 to 30 events with me throughout the year. Um, so we're doing a paid just because we want people to be invested in it. I don't want it for free because we are giving them discounts. Um, you know, and they'll say, you know, normally we're doing 20% off of races for them. Um, you know, our races that we own and then other clients, you know, we negotiate that the running club gets a discount too. Yeah. Uh, and it's pretty powerful, uh, the amount of people that sign up because of that. We actually use run sign up for our training programs as well as races. So you okay. can set it up so as a do training it. program and have people register as a, as a race. Just call it a training program. Same as my And it's a great platform for communication because if I need to email everybody at once, they're all in the club, you know, just like you would do your normal template with the email. We email everybody every week. Here's our races. Here's what's going on. It's coming up. Um, there's a clean up at the park. You know, I don't have to export all the data into a Gmail account. You know, we just use that. Any other questions? So I have a question because I just started. Um, I I'm based out of California. I do events in Wyoming and Wyoming, and um, we just. Uh, Launch our own events um, about three years ago. Very West Coast, West Coast, we have tiny companies and we have event companies. Yeah. And the first step on our West Coast to do both, but it's, it's the right economy, it's the right time to do it, and we are just introducing the, uh, the club. Um, my question to you is because you're doing that, um, how, do you, how do you work with politics? Do you find that even, even though the club will have your back and they'll oppose you, but do you find that you also have? Yeah, I mean, build your running club as big as you can. 
I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I get a thousand people in my club in the next two years. Every race we have, we have access to a thousand people before we market anywhere else. Any tips for getting sponsors, like local businesses, local companies, to help with the races? Yes, the biggest thing is sponsors have to see the value. Um, we sell a lot of sponsorships, and you know, a lot of times you're going to find a sponsor because they believe in the laws. If it's a small charity 5K, but when we're going out and I'm selling big corporate sponsorships, it's because I own 20 races. We have 50,000 people who come through our events. I can give them the demographics because run sign allows me to have all that data. Um, so I'm able to go out and sell a bigger sponsorship because I have these active people. And then, like I said, you know, Bolden Brothers with their heating and air conditioning, somebody's heater broke and they go to our Facebook page, say, who do I recommend? We said, then they just got business from it. Um, so we're really utilizing and leveraging the data that runs on PSOs to be able to sell that sponsorship. But you need numbers. In order to sell big sponsorships, you need numbers. Um, you know, you get 50 person at a race, more than likely that sponsor's not coming back next year, depending on how much money you're asking them for. Yeah. Um, so, two different ways. You gotta have big numbers, or it's gotta be close to their mark. If you're going to charities. And then, what else do you provide the sponsors? What visibility you provide them throughout the year? So with the Run Sign Up platform that allows us, we put their logo on the website with the direct on races on all our races that you know that they're a part of. Uh, we put banners up at the races with their logo on it. Uh, Mike does our social media. He posts about the you know he'll tag them in the whenever we take pictures of their stuff. If they're running a special, we'll put that on there and tag them on it. Um, we upgrade a lot too, so we'll sell you a sponsorship at this level, but then if you want to finish line arch with your logo on it, we'll upgrade you. If you want line glasses with your logo on it, we'll upgrade you. So we, everybody's got the same base level, and then you can be the presenting sponsor of our Main Street Mile. And we can do a finish line arch, we can do beer mugs with your logo on it, so you know, we create that base level and then help solve from there. But they get a lot of exposure, and the data that you get from there shows you how many impressions, how many times somebody click on that logo of your client. Um, you know, so you really got to use that data to be able to say, here you go, here's what you got for it. Um, you know, and when somebody signs up for a race too, and they get an email from you, and it's got all your client's logos on it, you know, that's another impression. You're probably seeing three emails, four emails just about your race. So it's not spam because that person signed up for that race, they're going to open up an email. So it's not, you know, they're, they're more likely, if you're selling corporate sponsorships, they're going to pay a higher dollar because they know the return on the investment. Is bigger because you know you have direct access to that that client. It's not like taking out a newspaper ad or anything like that. Question: I know like with Facebooks are all on the big media talk about the movement groups, and so I I have some pretty active people. I don't have a club yet. And they're just like natural brand ambassadors. And I was kind of thinking about moving and starting a group page, and it wasn't going to be specific to these kind of membership or anything. But maybe you offer that to your members. Like, how do you like encourage them? Chat with the group that we have there. Yeah. So, if you do social media at all, you know that that private group is powerful because every time somebody posts in there, I get notified. When I post a fusion racing, you may never see my post. So, to get people to talk into that platform and follow is powerful because you're actually going to see that post that, oh, Nick just posted something in the group, let me see what he did. Um, so, the eyes on your post and what you're talking about is a lot more powerful in that group than it is just on your regular. You know, Facebook page. So if you have the you know, if you have groups like that, create create groups. Thank you everybody. I appreciate your time.